baseball splits the weekend. And sophomore and softball sweeps Oakland. All this and more coming up on the Penguin Rundown. Welcome into the Penguin Rundown. I'm Kyle Wood alongside Abigail Cloutier. Abigail, unfortunately, the football team is going to have an, an early uh, end to their season as their last game got canceled, but that has not stopped the athletic department from playing well. Yeah, absolutely. We had a lot of great stuff going on this weekend, but most importantly, um, it got up, coming up first to softball, um, took on Oakland. I think they broke some school records, so I think you're going to get us started. The softball team set a program record for most conference wins on Friday, winning their 18th after a doubleheader sweep over Oakland. In Game 1, senior Maddie Lusk picked up her 11th win of the year, allowing only four hits and the 3-2 victory over the Golden Grizzlies. In Game 2, senior Ellie Buffenbarger tied her career high in strikeouts with 13 to help secure her 12th win in the 8-3 victory. In the nightcap, freshman Avery Schumacher and Maddie Lusk both hit home runs to drive in six of the team's eight runs. On Saturday, the softball team again swept Oakland in a doubleheader. In Game 1, freshman Jillian Jaxey went 3-for-5 with three RBIs and hit a walk-up double in the bottom of the ninth to help secure a 7-6 win over the Golden Grizzlies. In Game 2, the women used an 11-run third inning to lead them to an 11-3 victory. The softball team will visit Robert Morris for a four-game series this weekend against the Colonials. First pitch tomorrow is set for 3.30 p.m. The men's golf team competed at Wright State Invitational this past Sunday and Monday at Heatherwood Golf Club in Springboro, Ohio. Senior Kevin Cher led the Penguins to finish in fifth place. Cher finished with a season-best three-round score of 212 to tie for third place. YSU posted rounds of 288 and 307 in the first two rounds on Sunday and recorded a final round score of 299 on Monday. Sophomore Cole Christman tied for 14th with a three-round 223. His first rounds of 73 featured 11 pars and three birdies. Senior Ken Keller tied for 35th with a three-round total of 228. Keller's one over par 72 and the first round featured 15 pars and a birdie on the par four. As a team, the Penguins finished with a three-round total of 894. The Youngstown State men's golf team will now prepare for the Horizon League Championships, which will take place April 25th through 27th at the Burke Boilermaker Golf Complex in West Lafayette, Indiana. The women's golf team hosted Cleveland State on Saturday at the Youngstown Country Club. Senior Caitlin Shutt earned medalist honors for the fifth time in her career with a season-low round of 70. Shutt's round included 14 pars, one birdie, and an eagle. Sophomore Danae Rogola finished second with a 72, earning her fourth top five finish of the season. The women's golf team was victorious over the Vikings, beating them by three strokes, 302 to 305. Up next, the golf team will head to West Lafayette, Indiana for the Horizon League Championships, April 25th through the 27th. The YSU baseball team took another road trip this past weekend as they traveled down to northern Kentucky to take on the Norse in a four-game series. The Norse came out strong in game one of the series with a 9-7 victory. YSU sparked a late comeback in the ninth inning at a three-run homer by Don Bucko, but ultimately fell two runs short. In game two of the series, Colin Floyd continues his dominance in league play with his fourth consecutive complete game, dishing out just two hits and seven strikeouts. Youngstown State University scored just one run, but the Floyd shutout secured the win by a final score of 1-0. NKU bounced back in Game 3 with a 7-2 win, as YSU was only able to scatter six hits. In the getaway game on Saturday, on Sunday, the offense exploded, scoring 18 runs on 20 hits. Eleven guys in the lineup recorded at least one hit, and YSU was read by redshirt senior catcher Nick Caruso. Caruso is 4-for-4 four four with six RBIs and hit a three-run blast in the ballgame. His strong performance earned him Horizon League Batter of the Week. YSU won game 4, 18-6, to split the weekend series. Up next, the Gwins play at home versus Oakland starting on Friday at 5 p.m. For more on the baseball team, Richie and Caleb join us at the roundtable. 
Thank you guys. Here we are at the round table. My name is Caleb Ellison and joining me today is Richie Giuliano. And today we're going to be talking about the YSU baseball team. They're off to a pretty all right start. 18 and 17 overall and then 13 and 11 Horizon League play. And a big contributor to the team's success has been their pitching. Yeah, they've got one of the best pitching staffs in the Horizon League. We're going to touch on two of their starters. I'll touch on John Snyder first. And so far, Snyder has matched his career high in his last two starts against Northern Kentucky this past weekend. Six innings for Snyder, only two hits. He got out of a bases loaded jam in the first without giving up a single run. Got two big strikeouts and a flyout. And after that, he pretty much rolled through Northern Kentucky, only giving up two hits and a run. Nine strikeouts for John Snyder. His career high this year has been 12. And that's really what separated him from the rest of the pitchers in his pitching staff for Youngstown State. He's been a strikeout guy and he's got a hard throwing fastball. His fastball, he could hit upper 90s to lower 90s and then he drops in that nasty 12-6 curveball. And another guy we got to look at and it's Colin Floyd. He has been on a tear this season in his final year with Youngstown State. Absolutely, you're not long, you're not wrong there. Colin Floyd, left-handed pitcher, he has a six and two record. Um, last Sunday, he threw a seven inning complete game against Northern Kentucky University. That was his fifth complete game of the season and his third shutout. So Floyd has been amazing. Uh, he has two 12 strikeout games. The first time he did it was March 20th against St. Bonaventure, and then he later did it again on April 9th against Milwaukee. And so Colin Floyd, he's a really interesting case because he's coming off an amazing season. And as you know, Eastwood Field, home of the Penguins, is being used as a site for the MLB Draft League this upcoming summer. So if he wants to take that route, pitch on a familiar mound, it'll help his draft stock if, you know, he wants to take that route for sure. Yeah, well, and the way he's pitched this year, I mean, he's got an 062 ERA in Horizon League play. That's kind of crazy. And what separates him from the rest of the league is his movement on his pitches. He's got a two-seamer that runs away from right-handed hitters. He's also got a slider that moves the entire way of the plate. So nobody's really been able to touch his slider. And right now, Youngstown State, their pitching staff, you can't ask for much more here in the mid part of this Horizon League season. Right, but pitching can only get you so far. It's the offense that's also been really impressive, especially from two key contributors. I'll get it started with senior catcher Nick Caruso. What do you have to say about him? Well, Caruso has been on a tear. This is his breakout year here in his redshirt senior year. He came back to be behind the plate. He's hit 333, leading the team with 26 RBIs. And Nick Caruso, as you see on the screen, named a national top 30 hitter for uh, D1 baseball in this week against Northern Kentucky. He was also the Horizon League batter of the week with seven hits and seven RBIs and recording his third home run. He had six RBIs in the series finale earned Youngstown State a split against the Norse this past weekend. Nick Caruso has added a lot of pop in his bat this year. He's been able to cl uh, plug a couple gaps, has a couple doubles and a triple as well. So Nick Caruso has really taken advantage of his final season. Absolutely. His 927 OPS is just out of this world. And Sunday alone was a great game for him with uh, four for four, six RBIs. That's that career high from him in both stats. And another contributor to this Penguins lineup is infielder Philip Glasser. Yeah, Philip Glasser's been consistently good this entire season. He hits 331 just behind Nick Caruso. He's got 21 RBIs as well. And as you see, once again at the top, he's selected to the 2021 Brooks Wallace Award watch list, which is one of the top shortstops in the country to be on that watch list this year. And hits his glove and his strong arm that separates him from the rest of the shortstop all around the country. I mean, he's got great range where he could go deep in the hole or up the middle, and he's got such accuracy and strength with his arm that he's been able to get out a couple of speedy runners this year. Mm -hmm. It's his defense and his overall athleticism. His 16 stolen bases leads the Penguin. So he's a contributor in defense, in the plate, whatever you need. And so four games left for the Penguins this season. There's going to be two keen ones. On April 30th through May 2nd, they're on the road against UIC. Yeah, I mean, that's a big series against UIC, and then you play Milwaukee later in the year. So they're fighting for the top four finishes in this final stretch in Horizon League play. Mm -hmm. And they, they do have success against UIC earlier in the season, early April, when they played them. They took three out of four games in that series. And then in Milwaukee, they split the series a few weeks ago, two and two. But at the home, YSU is nine and two at home. And considering three of their next four series are at home, that'll be a good advantage for them. Yeah, it will. And, you know, to watch YSU baseball, you can listen in on YSNlive.com as well as follow YSUsports.com as well. That'll do it here at the Roundtable for Caleb Ellison. I'm Richie Giuliano. Let's send it back over to our hosts and Abigail and Kyle. The women's lacrosse team was defeated last Saturday to Mid-American Conference foe Detroit Mercy. Freshman Aaron Clark boasted a season-high four scores on the season, on eight shots on goal, scoring two free position and two unassisted goals on the day. 
fellow freshman Aris Lindsay and Emma Carter also added multi-score games during the clash with the Titans. The Penguins are back in action Sunday, April 25th, as they get set to take on in-state rival Kent State in a one-game road stint. Youngstown State University athletes shined at the track and field competition this weekend as throwers and runners competed at the Slippery Rock Bill Atlantic's Invitational. Six athletes took the top seat in their events. Highlights include junior Ethan Sparks, who won the 3,000 meter. Freshman Teddy Kinsey won the women's 100 meter hurdles. Senior Colin Harden finished the first in the 100 meter dash. Junior Noah Drudy won in javelin toss. And freshman Nia Williams Matthews won in triple jump. Junior Wyatt Lefker set a brand new school record when he won his event, men's pole vault. Lefker cleared the bar at 5.21 meters. He broke the record he just set just a few weeks ago at the Northeast Ohio Quad. Up next, the team will be competing April 23rd through 25th at a handful of events going back to the Slippery Rock Invitational. They'll also be at the Hillside Gina Relays, Ashland Alumni Open, and Drake Relays. We'll be back next week to bring you highlights from their busy weekend. Let's now send it over to Kyle Phelps, where he has this week's Penguin Play of the Week. Thanks, guys. So, for this week's Penguin Play of the Week, it is brought to you from Maddie Lusk of the women's softball team. Let's take a look. So, as you can see, Maddie Lusk works herself into the 2 1 count and creates a pitch that was over the middle of the plate. Over the center fielder's head and gone. It's a three run home run for Maddie Lusk. This is Maddie Lusk's fourth home run of the season and puts them up 8-1 over Oakland, which was the final nail in the coffin as they won 8-3. Congratulations to Maddie Lusk and the women's softball team and have, have a great rest of your season. Now, let's bring it back to Kyle and Abigail in the studio. Well, that'll wrap it up for Penguin Rundown. Make sure to follow us on social media at Penguin Rundown 1 on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Kyle Wills. And I'm Abigail Cloutier. We'll see you next time, Penguin Nation.